Uh, welcome back. Uh, I am Etiquette. I was just on with the Scarlet Violet race, but now we're doing a different Switch Pokemon game. Uh, side game this time uh, called Detective Pikachu Returns. This is the sequel to the original Detective Pikachu game on the 3DS. Um, I have not played the one on the 3DS, but I've played this one, obviously, uh, and it is quite fun. So I'm going to basically just hop right into things um, and get started. So I will give a countdown on the timer, uh, and we are ready to go in three, two, one, go. All right. So this is Detective Pikachu Returns. Uh, this is a... It's a definitely a different kind of game um, than your traditional Pokemon experience. Uh, there's no battles or anything like that. Uh, we're going to be playing as Tim here and trying to uh, play detective. Basically, we're going to uh, have a few crimes, a few you know interesting things happening around the city that we have to try and figure out what's going on. Um, there's an overarching story. The game is broken up into five different missions, along with a uh, prologue. Uh, we are currently in the prologue. And yeah, uh, the, the game basically centers around um, talking to the right people, asking the right questions, uh, deducing the correct things. And uh, the speed run really revolves around making sure you are doing the least amount of things that you have to do in order to beat the game. Uh, because there is actually quite a lot of side content that we are going to be avoiding. Um, because, you know, this is a speed run. We're just trying to beat the game. So. Um, all right, I talked to the wrong... Pokemon there. We're going to talk to Aromatis. Uh, something that is actually a little bit annoying from a uh, getting people into the game perspective when it comes to the speedrun is there are a lot of little cutscenes in little movies. However, uh, the game actually does not allow you to skip those cutscenes if you have not seen them before. So you ha you have to play through the game one time uh, in order to be able to skip the cutscenes for the speedrun. It's a little bit annoying, um, but one of the, the main issues with it is if you accidentally talk to somebody else that you're not supposed to in a, in a run and you end up getting a new cutscene, you have to sit through the cutscene because you've never seen it before. So it's a thing. Um, but yeah, anyways, um, story-wise, uh, our friend Detective Pikachu lost his hat, and that Corviknight is the one that stole it from us, so we were trying to find it, um, to, do a little bit of investigating, talk to some Pokemon, um, Tim can basically talk to all of the people, and Pikachu can talk to all of the Pokemon, and Tim and Pikachu can talk to each other. So uh, we're kind of leading on both of our partners here. All right. Uh, another thing that's nice about this game, um, text auto advances. Uh, if you are holding the right trigger on the controller, um, text will auto advance and you'll also be running. And the running is like a fast walk. It's very strange. Um, <laughs> it, it feels a little bit weird. It feels like you're like on ice skates, but... It is what it is. Um, that there is an investigation. Um, so occasionally throughout our time playing this game, we're going to have to investigate stuff. Um, it's a little bit more interactive. We're not just running around talking to people. Uh, we're actually looking through a crime scene or some other uh, point of interest. And are trying to figure out what's going on. Um, for those, for the most part, uh, you just kind of have to find everything in 
the area. So I talked to like some of the apples, I talked to some of the boxes, and then the actual applin that was there. Um, and the game wouldn't let me progress without doing all f- three of those. Um, there are a few cases where you can actually get away with like doing one or two things uh, when the it's game actually does you give you like five that you can do. Since then, we've solved all kinds of cases. The mayor even gave us an award for it. All right. So every mission is going to have one of these little uh if the two of us keep solving cases, Tim monologues at the end. I'm sure we'll find my dad someday. So this sort of marks the end of the prologue here. And we're going to get into our first real case. First case is going to be the missing jewel. Um so the missing jewel the the mission revolves around a jewel. It's called the Aurora Drop, I believe it is. Um that was stolen from uh, the Dennis residence, Mr. and Mrs. Dennis. Um, mm-hmm. And Look, yeah, I know. Uh, we have to figure out who stole it. And so that is going to be our task. But first, we have to actually make it to the house. Also, I will say, I apologize right now. The music in this game is very catchy and it's very, very easy to get stuck in your head. So I apologize. Hmm. All right. The missing jewel. Nice little intro card. All right, so we're going to do our first little interrogation here. Uh, so this is Mr. Dennis. Mr. Dennis is the one who had the gem stolen. So we're going to ask him two questions here. Uh, and he basically makes note that the only people who had access to the room are him and his butler. Um, and that we need to go up to the second floor to basically investigate the room uh, but first we're gonna get a little tutorial about deducing so this is the other main part uh, you've got your interrogations you've got your investigations and once you have all that figured out uh, you have to go into your notebook to do some deducing and so this is where you actually uh, make your claims if that makes sense but we don't have enough information now so we're gonna go ahead and go to our crime first crime scene Pikachu straggling along. So here we go. Um, as we can see, there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, so let's go ahead and investigate. We've got our cut glass over here. We've got some cotton. Something going on over here. We note that the case is actually still locked. Believe it or not. So the key wasn't used. It was it was cut open, basically. We also have this blue feather. Uh, that could be... You know, it could... Uh, be the culprit's feather. But first we're going to do some deducing. How do we think the jewel was stolen? The case was cut open. And that is correct. All right, so we're going to head outside. Um, we're actually going to see a little bit more, a little extension of our crime scene. Uh, because there's going to be another blue feather on the ground. Oh. And then we're going to head back downstairs. Um, so now that we're going downstairs, we're going to basically investigate or uh, interrogate everybody on the floor. So this is the butler. This is Turner. Uh, we're basically just going to give him, you know, the general like, you know, where were you about the crime? He says he heard a, a tussle upstairs. Um, he said 
you know, he didn't really get to see the the culprit or anything like that. Ask about the Aurora drop. We're going to go ahead and talk to Clefable. Uh, Clefable is a little bit a little bit snooty. Is not going to yeah. really give us the, the time of day or anything. So we'll, we'll have to go back to Clefable later. For now, we have a lot to talk to Claudia Dennis about. Um, she mentioned she saw a blue Pokemon flying away um, from the crime scene. And that Ducklet is actually Barnes. Um, Barnes is one of the people that's missing. Um, and it's actually his partner Pokemon is a Ducklet. Which Ducklet, blue Pokemon, blue bird Pokemon, um, has feathers. So easily could be the culprit. Go ahead and talk to Growlithe. Growlithe is not feeling too hot. Doesn't want to talk to us either. Um, and so now we've got Mr. Barnes. So Barnes is sort of like the first real suspect. The first person that people are starting to accuse. So we're going to try to figure out what's going on. Yep. There's the ducklet. Um, but we learn that she's actually off at the cafe. She is not. Uh, she was not here, so there's no way that she could have been the one doing it. Um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and talk to Growlithe here. Basically, just asking if he if he remembers anything of the incident. Um, he ended up falling asleep, and. Uh, Unfortunately, didn't get to to save the day. Yes. Oh, don't really want to talk to you. Sorry. Uh, so now Clefable's also going to be talking to us. Um, and Clefable's saying that she also got really sleepy while she was playing earlier this morning. And... Um, basically tells us that Barnes is not the one who did it. Um, doesn't know who did it because she was asleep, but knows that it wasn't Barnes. So we can go ahead and deduce that. Unfortunately, we got that information from a Pokemon, um, which we're not supposed to be able to talk to because humans can't talk to Pokemon. So we can't. That's like not admissible evidence, you know. So we're going to have to try to figure out another way to clear Barnes' name. Uh, and so the first step here is going to go to the Hi-Hat Cafe to see if we can find the Ducklet. See what they know. Uh, this is a little introduction to the side quests of the game uh, called Local Concerns. They're basically, you know, mini investigations, mini puzzles that you, you want to do during each mission. Uh, we're not going to be doing any of them. I do think an interesting speedrun category could be something like an all local concerns. Um, but I have not not taken the time to route it yet. So we're going to head to the cafe. Um, and this is Rachel and Jessica. Uh, they are friends of ours, so they're not really part of the investigation, but we do still have to talk to them, unfortunately. <laughs> or fortunately, if you are a socialite, I suppose. So we're going to talk to Pablo behind the bar. Hey. Basically confirming all the stuff that we learned. You know, Barnes and Ducklet, regular customers. Uh, we we saw the Ducklet um, just left a couple minutes ago. So we really don't think it's, it's going to be her. Um, actually, I need to deduce here before I can leave. Uh, and we deduced that the ducklet did, in fact, go to the Hi-Hat Cafe. And this time, we did get confirmation from a human. So that is something we can actually act on. 
Um, but we also do want to try and find the ducklet because the ducklet, the ducklet ran off. Um, we're going to head back to the mansion. Um, basically, this is Brad. Brad is sort of like one of the head investigators, um, and he mentions that Ducklet was actually spotted, um, but unfortunately, the the police let her go, so we have to go and find her. Uh, but we're going to talk to these Whimsicott here because, conveniently, the cotton on the Whimsicott matches the cotton from the crime scene. So we don't necessarily think it was the Whimsicott that did it. Uh, you know, they don't have the facilities to chop open the uh, the jewelry case, but we do want to see what they know. Um, and it sounds like they they basically flew into the window um, and Ponyard was there. So now we have to go and find Ponyard. Because Ponyard sounds like a Pokemon that could cut open a jewelry case. Oh, this guy. We're going to forget about this guy, okay? This is a very weird cutscene. I think it's after this. It's when we skip, but... Oh, can I ask you a favor, Pikachu? He, like, just grabs some of Pikachu's fur. It's very strange. All right. Tim, Tim. All right, so we're going to talk to this rock. Tim. Looks like they were made by a blade. And we're going to deduce, where's the red Pokemon? There it is. I, that's not what I meant to do. I sung at the rock. Can you stop singing at the rock? There we go. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so we, we angered the Ponyard, so now he's come out. We're going to ask him a few questions. Like that little snapshot of the Ponyard flying in through the window. Uh, but we got all the information we need from the Ponyard. Um... I forget exactly why the Ponyard is not really the bad guy. Um, uh, whoops, went too far. But we're still looking for the Pokemon with the blue feather. Because um, we know it's not Ducklet at this point. So the Ponyard was just the accessory, if that makes sense. Tim, Tim. But we still have to find the Pokemon who stole the Aurora drop. Tim, Tim. We're going to head back to back to the mansion. Um, and now we're going to go talk to Growlithe. Because what we're thinking is... You know, we have the feathers... Uh, yeah. Or we, we, we know Growlithe knows the, the ducklet, right? Um, and maybe the Growlithe can uh, sniff, sniff out the ducklet and be able to find her. So we're going to go ahead and take her up on that offer. And then we're going to get into one of my favorite parts of this game.
And that is... It is time to ride the Growlithe. Now, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to follow the uh, the scent of the ducklet. And there's actually a couple of other scents that you can come across as you're going. Uh, but the ducklet's always in the same spot, so we're just going to go. Come on. There you go. Not there. No, it is there. Right? Yeah, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I was saying I know where where the ducklet is. I immediately forget. All right, so here's ducklet. Ducklet was hiding just because humans were trying to grab her. Um, you know, very scared, not knowing what's going on, that kind of thing. I love the little purse around her neck. All right, so Ducklet also claims to have been asleep. Um, and Ducklet's feather is actually a different shade of blue, so it's definitely not hers. Um, however, there's also a Cramorant in the house, and Cramorant, also a blue bird Pokemon. So now we're going to go talk to Cramorant. That is the new scent we have. And Cramorant's claiming they got really sleepy after breakfast. So there's kind of a trend of all of the Pokemon in the house being basically put to sleep at the time of the the incident. So Robert? something's suspicious there. So now that we're done talking to the Trubbish, Trubbish found a note. And the note is basically a confession. Or not a confession, but it, it proves that they're, somebody is trying to make Barnes take the fall. So now Pikachu basically tells Tim all the stuff that he learned while we were gone. We're going to go ahead and deduce Barnes' innocence by using the note. So the weird thing is all of them fell asleep somehow. And now we have to figure out why they all fell asleep. First place to look, Growlithe's bowl. And there's sleep powder. Docker, I know. Go ahead and deduce that there was sleep powder put in all their breakfasts. So now we need to find who got the sleep powder. And who better for that than our trusty nose, Growlithe? I 
I do think it's funny that they purposely sniff the sleep powder. And they're even like, be careful, don't don't breathe too much, you'll go to sleep. <laughs> All right, so it's another scent trail we're supposed to follow, but it's just all the way back here. Past the Venonat. The Venonat could be a good good pick, but it is not Venonat. Instead, it's Lilligant. So we're going to head back. And now the final piece of the puzzle is figuring out who had access to all the Pokemon to sleep, to slip them the sleep powder. So we have one final question to ask Mr. Dennis. And it turns out Turner, one of the people we investigated earlier or interrogated earlier, is the only one who has access. So it must be that Turner that Turner did it. So let's go talk to Turner. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the one of the big you know, sticking points from his earlier testimony was that he was punched by the assailant. Um, and because we know Ponyard was there, Ponyard can't punch because he only has uh, like daggers for fists. So we caught him in another lie there. So now we're on the way to find the Cramorant. And lo and behold, here's the Cramorant. And the last piece is where is the stolen jewel? The Cramorant has eaten it. All right. So at the end of every mission, um, there is this little section where they ask you these questions. Um, and these questions are not always the questions themselves are in the same order, but the responses are not in the same order. So you actually do have to pay attention to, uh, which answer you're selecting. It's not just like, Oh, do two, three, two, like a lot of, uh, other of the similar things in Pokemon. But yeah, that is the end of mission one. Uh, so we're going to be skipping a bunch of cutscenes here, but during these cutscenes, one of the things that we note is that the Cramorant kind of just goes berserk um, and ends up looking like it's being, or it has like this weird thing on its back. It's like a cube. And, um, there's also another cutscene where it's like an unrelated part where there's a bunch of Beedrill that come out and attack everything. And um, they also have those little cubes on their back. So uh, it is noted by the characters that something is a little suspicious there, but we don't quite understand what's going on yet. Right. All right. Irene. Oh, there's another one. Yes.
The cramorant that stole the Aurora drop. The swarm of Beedrill that attacked Mewtwo. They both had glowing devices stuck to them. After hearing Mewtwo say my dad's name. Also, Mewtwo is here. I think... I if I investigate I've played this game more skipping all the cutscenes and I just like do not remember the main story. So if I ever get anything wrong in the story, I apologize. I'm doing my recollection and obviously like how it comes up in the speed run. Um, all right, so this is mission two. Mission two is the fabled Aurora. So this is us kind of learning about like why why do people care about this Aurora drop uh gem? Like what is what is its value, what is its purpose, that kind of stuff. And our friend Rachel, um, who we're about to meet here, suggests that one of her professors, uh archaeology professor or something to that effect, would um be able to answer those questions for us. So, uh, and, th and this mission is actually pretty cool. This this is one of the first instances of the order you doing that you do things kind of mattering. Um, there are a number of Pokemon around that um. That have like different jobs, I guess is the the best way to put it. And like Monferno is good at making things hot and blowing fire and, you know, things to that effect. And by learning about those Pokemon and their strengths um, early, rather than like when you actually need them, you can kind of keep that information for later. Pretty cool. Um, all right, so we're going to go go ahead and talk to Passimian. Uh, we need to figure out first first puzzle is how to get into the ruins. Mm -hmm. oh. Ask about okay. Professor Gordon. We're going to make our way inside the ruins here by basically having the Pokemon hit a pressure switch above the door. And we're going to hit the one below the door. All right. So now that we are in the ruins, uh, the next puzzle is how to get further into the ruins. So... We're going to go ahead into this first room here, and there's going to be a number of Passimian statues. as well as a door in the back. Um, and if you missed it, there were three of the Passimian statues. We're gonna head into this room here. And there's a poor slow poke just frozen in the ground. But it turns out the slow poke's a badass. And he's going to just take himself free. Hey. Okay, so this Slowpoke is the partner Pokemon of Professor Gordon. So I'm going to try to learn some information.
And we need to look at these murals. So each one's going to have a Passimian on it uh, with a colored berry as well as an expression. So this is the blueberry and it's sour. So we're going to need to find a blue sour berry. There is a mural here, but we can't see what's going on. It is frozen. So we'll have to figure out how to handle that. And we've got another sweet berry that is yellow. And now we can do some deduction. There seems to be some sort of puzzle with berries in the Passimian statues, but we don't know exactly what to do yet because one of the murals is frozen. So now it's going to be a matter of figuring out what berry goes on each statue as well as what to do about the middle statue. Um, and so I alluded to it earlier, but Monferno is good at making things hot and melting ice. So he is probably going to be our best bet. Uh, but we're going to talk to this guy first and ask about the berries. And he mentions spicy red berries. Now, we don't know that we need spicy red berries yet. But... We're going to ask the Monferno what he's good at. Um, and he's good at spewing fire, so... We will keep that in mind. We're then going to go ahead and talk to these low tad. Uh, the low tad aren't going to help us now, but they will help us later. So we're going to ask what they're up to and what they're good at. Then we're going to grab this blue sour berry. And then while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and deduce how to get rid of the ice on the mural. Um, and the reason for this is this is like the longest path you have to take. Uh, the To do this whole section, there are like two main paths you have to go down. This is the longest one. And by deducing that now, we'll actually get teleported back into the ruins so we don't have to walk all the way back. Uh, and so now Monferno has melted the middle ice sheet. So we can go ahead and investigate the final mural where it looks like it's a spicy red berry. Shocker, considering what Chris already told us. Mm -hmm. um, however, I believe he also mentioned that the spicy red berries are not really around this area. Like, they don't grow around here. So we're going to have to try to find a substitute. Mm. Um, what did I miss? Oh, deduce. So we want a tomato berry, but there are no tomato berries around here. That's what it is. I missed that part of the note. Mm. So now we'll talk to him, ask about a substitute. Mm. And curry is a good substitute. And then we will head on down and grab the sugar berry. Oh. 
So now we know the answers to all of these. And instead of the tomato berry, we're going to substitute in curry and see if it works. Uh, and sure enough, it does. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you let the cutscene play a little bit too long and it just... And it just... All right, so now we're going to head this way. Um, unfortunately, there's this giant gap in the floor. Uh, it's kind of rude of the ruins to have a trap like this, but Slowpoke yeah. comes up with a great idea. You're just going to fill it with water and swim across. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot swim across. It is frigid cold out, and so that would be... Not so good for us. Uh, but we did talk to Lotad earlier, who mentioned one of the things they're good at is giving rides to other Pokemon. Maybe that can also work for people. Uh, spoiler, it does. All right. Uh, so now we're going to get into... The first of a few sections like this, um, where they're kind of like stealth sequences, where the objective is to like not get caught um, and sneak around either Pokemon or people. And um, this first one here is Darmanitan. And counterintuitively, this is the fastest way to do this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and skip this cutscene. I'm going to run down. I'm going to get myself caught. And I'm going to run down. I'm going to get myself caught. And now that I've gotten myself caught twice, um, the the Pokemon that are doing this, you know, that we have to try to avoid, um, they have a set path. They will always do the same thing every time. And uh, what they do is different if you've failed twice already. If you've not failed or have only failed one time, then they have like a much slower path. But as soon as you failed twice, they like speed up the path because they're like, all right, this person's getting sick of this game. We need to like get them through this. And so this Darmanitan would have probably gone back and forth like twice or something like that. And um, it overall would have taken longer than just getting yourself caught twice. Not every sequence like this can be sped up in that way, but this one can as well as uh, at least a couple others. Uh, and it's, in my opinion, one of like the really cool bit bits of like speed tech. Like this is obviously, you all have seen this for 43 minutes. Like it's not the most exciting speed game, um, but I think I think that tech is really interesting. Um, All right, so we've now found we've now found Gordon. So we're gonna go and look here, and the door is definitely blocked off. Uh, Pikachu squoes squ through like a little hole in the wall. Um, so obviously the people can't go through there. Um, and now one of the really unfortunate things about the speedrun of this game. Um, there are a couple of action sequences that are actually really cool. And, uh, if you have the ability to skip cutscenes, it skips the action sequences as well. It's very strange. It's like, it's basically like it's an interactive movie, like a quick time event situation. Um, but yeah, having the ability to skip the cutscene just skips the minigame. And it's kind of annoying because I, I feel like that would have added something 
pretty interesting to the speed run. But um, here, we're basically befriending the Darmanitan who is going to allow us to uh, or allow Pikachu to ride him. And Growlithe's special ability was the ability to sniff uh, Darmanitan smashes. Just like that. All right. right. So go ahead and talk to Gordon for a few questions. Whoop. That was a really short question. <laughs> Just trying to scroll down on my notes. Um, and then one of Darmanitan's uh, stipulations for helping us was that we were going to help him find his friends. So uh, Pikachu is about to hold up that end of the bargain and help Darmanitan find his friends. Uh, he's got four friends. He's got a Vanillite, a Mr. Mime, hey. or a Galarian Mr. Mime, I should say. He's got a Vanillite. It was Vanillite, Mr. Mime, uh, Bergmite, and... Smooch him. That's what it is. So we're going to go ahead and find all them. I literally could just looked at my notes. All four of them are right there in the notes. One of them is actually over there on the left in that snow pile, but we're just going to get them on the way back. Doesn't matter what order you do these in. There's two of them in this room. And there's also that that Ursa ring in the back that we're just not going to talk to. Man, man. I believe it's a local concern. Uh, and one of the few instances of Pokemon that you can actually just not talk to. Like, you have to talk to them, but you don't have to ask them any questions. The game just allows you to continue on, even if you don't interrogate them, which is really nice. There's Smoochum. And then one last Pokemon. All right, so day one of PSR Marathon is wrapping up, at least here in the United States. So I'm going to have to ask chat, how's everyone enjoying the marathon this year? Good if you win slots. Close. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool runs in the marathon this year. Um, so I definitely implore you all to check out the schedule if you've not already. Oh, I just went right past. Hey. So yeah, we, we got trapped in here. Um, this time it was not rubble. 
Um, but somebody actually closing the door behind us. So we're trying to figure out our way out. And basically these two murals that sh show us that we need to solve a puzzle using the statues in that first room. Or in the next room, not the first room. We're going to go ahead and talk to the ice queue in the corner and then check out the room. Uh, you can see the, the Pokemon statue there in the middle of the room, but there's no human statue. There's supposed to be a human statue, so we're going to have to find it. It's going to be hidden under that ice pillar, of course. Not Slowpoke, you doofus. There we go. It is, like, really difficult to control All right, Tim. Tim sometimes. Um, okay, so end of investigation questions. We've got the Clefairy statues depicted in the mural. We're trying to figure out how to get out of this room, basically. Uh, it's hidden in the ice. We need to move the statues. We need to create the missing hand and connect the statues. And then Ice Q can use a move to freeze the statues. Again, to reiterate, those those options, the, the answers are always the same. Like, it's always going to be, like, the Clefairy statue or whatever. But the order of the options are different every time you play. So you can't just remember it's, like, option 1, 2, 3, 3, 3 or something like that. It is actually uh, a little bit more involved than that. Mm -hmm. I I tend to gravitate toward uh, non-reading clues for those. So like the Clefairy statue depicted in the mural is the longest line. And so that's how I recognize that one. But some of them, unfortunately, you do just have to like read. There must be something I can do. Hate reading. With all the unrest gripping the city. All right, but that is mission two. Something. Of course. I'll just talk to Inspector Holiday. He's bound to know something useful. That is mission two in the books. Off to mission three. Mission three is my favorite mission. It is the longest mission. Um, it is called mm -hmm. Detainee Pikachu. Um, in my submissions, I also submitted just as we don't have like, like individual level categories for this game. Um, there's honestly not many people that run it, but, uh, I, I think if we did, it would be kind of cool to have like each individual mission as one. And so that's what I also submitted alongside this, um, is just doing this one mission. Cause like I said, it's my favorite. It's also the longest one. So it's like a good representation of the game. <laughs> Uh, but basically, storyline wise, um, the cops have basically uh, arrested Pikachu for defacing a statue, uh, basically destroyed a statue of Slowpoke in the middle of town. Which doesn't sound like Pikachu, but they say they have evidence in pictures. And obviously, it's not acknowledged yet in the game, but, I mean, we've got that little cube on her back. I wonder what that is. That seems a little suspicious. There were a few Pokemon that had cubes on their back earlier, and they were doing some suspicious things.
So one of the reasons I really like this mission is because you, you're you constantly switching back and forth between Tim and Pikachu. So we do a little section as Pikachu inside prison, and then a little section here with Tim outside, trying to figure out what's going on, trying to get Pikachu out of there. Um, and then there are little moments where like we can go and visit Pikachu. And so like we converge and are able to transfer information. I don't know, it's 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 a neat neat mission. I think it's just neat. All right, so we're going to go to the plaza if we don't run into the mailbox. See what kind of damage Pikachu supposedly did. All right. All right, so the damage is definitely done. As we can see, we've got some water puddles. We've got a scorch mark. We've got some electricity. We got kid. We've got a slow poke. All right. From this, the only logical conclusion is that an electric Pokemon was in fact responsible. I will say, because of the scorched grass, I was thinking that my first playthrough, I definitely picked a fire Pokemon, because I was like, ah, no. It's not Pikachu, there's no way. So we're going to ask everyone around if they saw Pikachu last night. And basically everyone is going to gonna say the same thing. They saw Pikachu um, last night. Uh, and he was here, but he... Uh, ended up having to... Or ended up leaving, and then that guy saw him actually getting carried off to the police uh, while sleeping, so... So we're going to go. It is time for visitation. Mm -hmm. And obviously Pikachu... Says he slopped by the the plaza, but the slowpoke statue was unharmed. Mm -hmm. I was mentioned that he fell asleep in the car. Let's, uh, let's deduce Pikachu. So where was Pikachu last night? Pikachu was definitely in the hi hat cafe. We're pretty sure that he's not the one responsible, but we have to prove it. Mm -hmm. So later that night... So that's the situation. Oops. Hmm. Alright, so our next big thing is trying to figure out what those cube-shaped devices are. According to Inspector Holiday, they are like management devices. We don't know exactly what that means, so... 
Uh, we are about to figure that out. And it turns out those devices are controlling Pokemon. Or we think they could be controlling Pokemon. I guess we don't technically know that for sure. But we're going to go out and talk to Brad, who is another one of the investigators. Uh, and now it is time for the next day. Playing as Pikachu. Um, and so this big, this section here is basically um, Pikachu trying to figure out why everyone, like, why are all these Pokemon in prison as well? Is there anything suspicious going on? Like, did they actually do the things they were arrested for? Stuff like that. Uh, but first, Sableye is going to hey, hey. test us, trying to find all of the hidden jewels. So we've got one in the bowl. We've got one in the box. Oh. And of course, one all the way up here. Oh. Really sneaky. And we're able to travel between the different rooms with this little vent. So we're going to go ahead and go to Inteleon's room, where there's Inteleon and Morpeko. Figure out what they're up to. Uh, unfortunately... We do have to ask basically all of these questions. Uh, it is not something where we can just ask the bare minimum. Uh, the game does require us to ask every single question. Hey. Hey. At least the text auto advances. That's what I'll say. It's like technically the fast forward button, but it also advances text and also makes you run. So you spend the entire run holding down the right trigger, which honestly gets real old real fast. Um, every time I run this game, I tell myself I should map it to a different button, like a face button. Just so I uh, am not constantly dealing with the like the little bit of resistance that the triggers actually give you, but taping it down. I mean, theoretically, you could. Uh, it's not something I would want to do, but. There's probably a rule discussion surrounding that. We'll head to Luxray's room. All right. All right, this is a part I wish I had practiced a little bit before starting. Um, not specifically this. This part's easy, but... Um, there's another one of those sections where it's like a stealth section. No. 
there. Uh, another stealth section, and it does not pay to get caught. But you can do it on a pretty tight timing window. Um, okay. So Luxray special powers, he can see through walls. So you can see when people are turning, so you can turn, or so you can go. All right, so we can hang here. Oh, wait, no, no, I'm supposed to go this way. Crap. There's normally a guy in this room that you're supposed to actually wait for him to leave. <laughs> but because I was waiting in the other room for so long, it didn't matter. All right. So now we'll head back up. There's a cool timing that you could have done there that I just forgot yeah. hey scope it out Lux Ray. Yeah. all right so another section where you can kind of do things a little bit out of order um, we're gonna go ahead and start talking to some people who Basically had their Pokemon arrested. Um, so there are three three cases of Pokemon being arrested around town that seem out of the ordinary. Um, like Inteleon apparently like slashed through a flower display and like there's things that are just out of character for their Pokemon, so So we'll talk to her. I no, I wanted this. It's really easy to click the wrong thing sometimes. Cause I'm like holding up to buffer the move, but it's All right, so we'll talk to this guy. This is more Pecco's owner. So we go investigate the mess here. All right. Uh -oh. Oh. 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 oh, I actually did way more than I was I oh. needed to. Also, there's a woman that 
talks to you when you first go on to Second Avenue here. I tried so many different ways to avoid having to talk to her. Like, approaching from different angles, going around, talking to people out of order. Like, I just could not figure it out. Because, like, she's just so inconsequential. But she just stops you. As you walk by. And so here's the third guy whose partner Pokemon was detained. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and investigate his crime scene. And basically, uh, what we've determined is that, like, none of the evidence really matches with the right Pokemon. Um, Impidimp is supposed to be this little thieving little thing, but uh, has, you know, coins just left around his uh, crime scene. Inteleon doesn't have, like, the ability to slash things, so why would there be slash marks? Stuff like that. Uh, and we're about to figure out basically what is happening here. So I'm going to go ahead and head all the way back here. There's another person whose partner Pokemon is uh, missing. It's a Ditto. Turns out there's a ditto that's missing and there were like pictures of like Pikachu you know doing the crime and Luxray doing his crime and stuff like that um, but there was something off about the pictures like Pikachu didn't have his stripes on his back and it turns out the ditto is just not not very good at using transform I think is what she says leaves out some details Yes. Hey. Yeah, see the stripes are missing on the picture. We're going to go ahead and deduce that it was, in fact, Ditto that did all of the bad stuff. But we think the Ditto was being controlled, so the Ditto is not actually bad. Alright. 
So now we're going to go um, talk to some more people. Uh, and throughout this section, we're going to learn that Brad, who's this head investigator guy, um, he's actually investigating these different crimes as well. Um, sort of like separate from the Pokemon Protection Bureau. And we're going to try to convince him basically that there's something nefarious going on with with the, the actual Pokemon Protection Bureau. And in the, the final section of this mission is going to be Pikachu basically getting that last bit of evidence. We're going to go talk to the people from before and basically learn that Brad is also come by to do some investigating. I'll go back and tr go to talk to Pikachu, and Pikachu is going to do, like I said, one last bit of sleuthing to uh, to find some evidence. But of course, we need Luxray's help, as always. So another little stealth section. Uh, this one doesn't have a fast way through it like some of the other ones with the uh, getting caught on purpose. So when we just do sort of the, the standard way. really important to mash X or A here because it is possible for that person to turn around quicker and you get caught there right at the end. So we found the ditto. Ditto's in, this is uh, Butler's office. So it's almost like he's getting a little special treatment. Almost like he's being used, not like the other Pokemon. Uh, 
All right, so it's five one five zero oh, two zero. Oh. All right, so that was a lot of incriminating evidence. And then now uh, Pikachu basically just overheard a phone call, I believe it was, with Butler and someone from, oh boy, some organization. Um, and basically what they're doing is they're using the devices. They're selling the Pokemon. It's like a whole whole crime syndicate going on. But we're busting it. Let's think. So the one final part of this mission, uh, now that we've basically figured everything out, um, we're about to go explain everything to Brad as well, um, who's been doing his own investigation, and he's going to agree with us. Um, the very last bit of this is going to be Pikachu actually has to escape from prison. So um, this is actually a really cool section. It has uh, another stealth section that is sped up by failing, so we'll, we'll get to do that again which is always exciting. Hey. All right, so essentially what they've done is Pikachu figured out that he can take off his cube. Um, and then once he has his cube off, he can take off everyone else's cube. And then as long as the Pokemon all play along um, when they are being controlled, then the humans won't know. So they basically all came up here uh, as they normally get controlled to do. And then uh, now they're going to make their grand escape. But first, we have to go all the way down back to the first floor or the uh, basement, rather, where the remaining cells are, because we want to we want to free all the Pokemon. We don't want to just free our little group here. So like I said, um, these stealth sections are on cycles, basically, um, and they have a set pattern, um, but that pattern changes once you get caught twice. So we're going to intentionally get ourselves caught twice. This is going to speed up. Actually, not the first two people that we're passing. They're actually going to be the exact same. Um, 
but the third person gets sped up dramatically. Basically, if you don't, well, let me get let me get to the third person. And I'll I'll explain it. So this guy here, normally he walks all the way down to the door, then all the way back up, then all the way back down, then all the way back up, and then does this, where he turns around and then goes through that. Instead, he just does that all in one swoop, and that's that's like the whole thing. All right, so there's the last girl, and we are out. Now we've got our end of investigation questions. Um, once again, these the order of these questions or the options within each question is randomized, so I do have to pay attention. Pikachu is at the Hi Hat Cafe. The longest one. Longest one. Manual. Handing over. Um, and that is pretty much it for mission three. Yeah. Uh, moving into mission four, um, mission four has um, kind of a similar structure to this one, where this one we were kind of bouncing back and forth between Tim and Pikachu, um, like controlling and like learning information about and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this one is going to do a similar thing, but instead of it being between Tim and Pikachu, it's actually going to be between Tim and Harry. And Harry is uh, Tim's father. So it's going to be, we're kind of like going back in time. And uh, we'll be going back in time and reliving sort of uh, Harry's experience in the same area. It's basically where... Harry and like Pikachu met for the first target. time. Rachel's friend, Jessica. Tomorrow, we'll go to Bamboo Burrow and make sure Jessica is safe. And if she has any information about Unitas, that'll get us closer to solving this case. Um, but yeah, so uh, it's where Pikachu and Harry met for the first time. So, um, mm -hmm. we're basically going to be reliving Pikachu's memories. Um, mm -hmm. essentially Pikachu is having some like headaches and some weird, like fainting and stuff like that. And so, um, whenever Pikachu does that, like weird fainting thing, that's when we hey. take control. Uh... This guy? Yes. No, this is the pizza guy. Well, I need to talk to him anyways, but... I think it's this guy, then. Yeah. In my notes, I wrote, talk to the souvenir shop owner. But, like, I don't know what the souvenir shop is. Um, okay. So here's our first transition over to the past. <laughs> Detective Harry Goodman. Can I just say how ridiculous it is that their last name is Goodman? Like Goodman. a little ridiculous a little bit too on the nose if you ask me uh this guy
Well, I mean, it's the same thing with, like... Like, Norman is the normal gym leader. Like, Norman's a normal, like, a real name. It's just, it's a little on the nose. Or, like, Misty is the water type. Oh, wait. Crap. That's fair. Figure out what happened here. There was a tussle. That's literally what I have written in my notes. Um, okay. So now this is uh, Harry going to meet Pikachu. Wow. Pikachu being very protective. Unfortunately, the Pancham is injured, but we can't do anything about it. If the Pikachu won't let us close. Um, so we basically get the odd egg there. Or odd stone. I forget, like, oval stone? I forget what it is. We get that there on this trip because we're about to go basically figure out how we can help the Pancham, and one of the items is going to be locked behind trading that to somebody, so. Um... So by grabbing it, on the first trip instead of having to go back for it. Pretty good. Uh, wait. I literally scrolled one thing too far. So he gives us nanam berries. And then nanam berries are going to allow us to Essentially bait the bunnel bee out of its hole, and which will give us the energy roots. God, explaining the steps without like without having like the full picture of like the puzzle and everything is so weird. It's like, yeah, we need to talk to Happiny so we can trade the egg to the kid so we can get Bunnelby. Okay. Like the weirdest XY route I've ever seen. Okay. All right, so now we've healed the Pancham, so Pikachu is very happy with us. But we need to go further into the forest. I actually didn't have to do that at all. Whoops.
Okay. Now it's back to present day. Uh, and one of the problems in this entire mission, um, I was mentioning earlier that Pikachu kind of having some, um, you know, headaches and is passing out and stuff like that. Um, and he's also remembering weird things like he's he's basically talking. He's talking like as if he's hairy. Um, but also as if he's Pikachu, like he was saying that, like, oh, he got angry when Harry approached, um, he got angry when Harry approached earlier, uh, when he was guarding the Pancham, but then he was the one who got the medicine and stuff like that. So there's a lot of conflicting stuff in the story. Um, so we're, we're keeping an eye on Pikachu. Yeah. But for now we are, uh. Tasked with making a pizza, if I'm remembering right. We have to go find all of the ingredients. Tim, over here. Shout out to Tim. 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 Pokemon cooking game? I know, right? Tim, over here. Tim, over here. I want a, a Pokemon cooking game. Like I know like cafe mix and stuff is a thing. But like, I want one like a like a cooking mama. I I hit down. I'd like to let it be known. Let the record show. I hit down. <laughs> hey. Yes. Yeah. So we've got more conflicting stuff from Pikachu. He was protecting Pancham, didn't leave his side, but then Pikachu tried to scare him off, he says. Mm -hmm. Kim being Pikachu. So here's Pangoro. Pangoro, obviously, the uh, Pancham has grown up. Uh, Pangoro is going to be our sort of utility Pokemon for this mission. Um, and there's nothing else there. Yeah, Pancham or Pangoro is going to be our utility Pokemon, uh, and it's basically strength puzzle. <laughs> um, the the first couple strength puzzle, like 
they're not like involved strength puzzles by any stretch. Uh, there's only one where you even have any choice of where you can push stuff. So I do kind of wish they were a little bit more involved, but. It is kind of fun to, to ride as Pancham, though. Or Pangoro. Keep saying Pancham. Tim! Get over here! Tim! Tim. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so back to the past. We need to find our way through here. All right, so we can investigate the lock. There's a key. And then there's a hole here that's perfectly Pikachu sized. That'd be really funny if they saw a key on the other side. I want like a, a video game or something or like an escape room. I don't know. Something like this where there's like a gate with a key and there's a key on the other side of the gate and you go and get that key and it's not the right key. I think that would be a, a fun little twist. We need the Chesto Berry to wake up the Graveler. Once the Graveler gets out of the way, we can open the door. Oh, yeah, use Tail Whip on the thing. I mean, to be fair, I don't know how Thunderbolt's going to help either, but, like, Tail Whip is pretty funny. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, seeing that in chat, just a reminder to everybody, make sure you check out the schedule for the marathon. If there's any runs that you want to make sure you catch. Um, if you don't get to catch every run that you want to live, the runs will be up on YouTube um, over the course of the next few weeks. Uh, lots of really cool 
cool runs, cool runners. Um, one thing that's interesting about this year's schedule uh, is there are a few games that are in the, the marathon more than once. Um, and so it's kind of an interesting way to see, you know, games approached in different ways because they're not going to be the same category every time, right? Um, So it can be kind of a, a unique experience this year. Hey. 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 All right, so more strength puzzles. Like I said, they're not exactly super difficult, but they're still here. Oh, yeah. get off mm -hmm. oh my god okay. so frustrated So this is the final little bit of the mission. And then basically, uh, after this mission, we essentially learn that. Uh, or we it's one of those things that, like, you know, pretty much the entire time. But it turns out that Pikachu is actually your dad. Uh, like something happened with his mind that got transported into Pikachu's. Yeah. All right. But this is going to be the end of the fourth mission and we're about to hop into the fifth and final mission we just have to do the final end of investigation questions here not as dramatic well yeah i mean they they, bas they basically play it up this entire mission and then there is a bit of a reveal obviously i'm going to be skipping the cutscenes, which is where a lot of that information comes in but the ending of this uh is really funny because um there's it's very anticlimactic because again I mentioned this in mission two um I think there's there's some in mission four as well that we miss um but like there are like these quick time events and stuff like that that you have to you have to do the first time you play the game, uh, but they get skipped with the cutscene skipping. Pikachu, Mewtwo was able to save his life, and so but you kind of like isn't finished just yet. The end of the run is like you answer a question and then you just skip a million cutscenes. Same name as the organization. 
We need to investigate the Unity Lab next. All right, fifth and final mission. Uh, this one is going to basically get all of our friends from the previous missions. We've got Pancham, or Pangoro, I should say. We've got the Darmanitan, the Growlithe, and the Luxray. Um, and they're going to basically help us through, mm -hmm. uh, through the lab that we're going to infiltrate. First, we have to figure out our way into the lab. Which I just think th this is real big. Let's go Pikachu and Eevee. How did they get into the house in Cerulean to rob the place? Um. Wait, did I miss a door? Okay. Where it's like, oh. how did nobody notice this? way down too far. There we go. Yeah. Do I have to talk to the doors again? Because I already... I wasn't supposed to talk to them earlier. Hey. Yeah, let's try again. Okay. So Growlithe is going to help us get into the building. So let's go ahead and talk to the Growlithe. Uh, there she is. I think it's this side. Like, there's just a hole in the side of the building. How did nobody see this? Like, I get it's obscured from the outside, but from the inside? <laughs> but either way, we are in the lab. Is it over here? Oh, yeah, this is the key. Okay. Uh, the middle table for the note. Electric panel. Okay.
Okay. To the next floor. So this whole lab, you're basically going floor by floor, um, and you have to find like the code uh, to unlock the door. So like, or unlock the elevator, or the passcode to the stairs, or whatever the heck the heck it, it is. Um. And so that's sort of sort of what we're going to be doing um, along the way. We're also going to be like investigating this lab itself. Uh, but the more important thing is the passcodes. We'll go ahead and do that. We got the map of the facility. We're going to run to the other side. So we know where the passcode is. The passcode's in the staff room, but we know that there are people in there. All right, we may not know about it yet, but. I'm gonna go talk to Lox Ray, because he can see through walls. Oh, no, poor Whipper. We're going to get Pikachu into that room through the duct to go save the Wooper. Hey. And we're going to get some water to help the Wooper out. All right. All right, so we basically send out a false alarm over the intercom. 
Um, and the people in the other room are going to leave. And then this is like. I don't know how they expect anyone to like remember this. I mean, great. You don't have many choices, but you, you go to go in this room and the electrodes like I'm going to blow up and your quick thinking has to be let's go talk to Wooper because it has the ability damp. Like that that is wild to me. Hey. Mm -hmm. oh. All right, we got the passcode it's 7020, so we're going to go ahead and no. This door. Uh, and unlike Legends Arceus, which you will see later in the marathon, if you watch the full thing, uh, mm -hmm. you cannot use the number pad, like the uh, USB number pad for that. That is an in-game number pad. So unfortunately, you do have to menu for it. Yeah, last run of the marathon, Pokemon Legends Arceus by Thomas Patrick WX was just on commentary for the last run, the uh, Scarlet Violet Treasures of Ruin race. Apologies. All right. So we've got another strength puzzle. Uh, this one is actually a little bit more involved. It's still not as involved as I would like for a strength puzzle, but I guess technically you can mess it up, unlike some of the other earlier ones. Actually, can you mess it up? So far, I've had one option for everything. Oh, yeah, you can mess it up if you move that one one too many. I forgot about that. But we're good here. Okay, so this is actually kind of an interesting thing. So we've got another uh, stealth sequence here where there's going to be a dust nor that we have to mm -hmm. um, oh. we have to avoid. However, it's not faster to get caught twice. However, I'm going to let this cutscene play out in fast forward because the dust nor moves during the cutscene and he just moves a little bit further if you're on fast forward than if you're not <laughs> because it takes the same amount of time or you fast forward because he moves faster obviously because the whole cutscene moves faster but if you skip the cutscene he basically is uh if you skip the cutscene he um like, he's able to advance during the cutscene, is what I'm trying to say. So, it's the only instance of us uh, purposely letting a cutscene play out. 
But yeah, this one unfortunately just isn't any faster if you uh, get yourself caught like it is for the other ones. Alright, 2806. Alright, which room is this? This is the Excadrill section. Okay, so this is another stealth sequence. We are going to... This one, we do want to get ourselves caught. Um, Again, if you missed the... Earlier segments um, where I explain this. Basically, uh, all these stealth sequences have the the enemies that you're trying to avoid have set cycles. Um, and so you can't speed them up at all. It's just based on how they move. Uh, but those cycles do change if you've been caught twice. So... Um, as soon as you get caught twice, the game, I guess, feels bad for you and makes their cycles uh, take a lot less time. So it ends up being worth it to get yourself caught in a couple of places uh, just so you have faster cycles. So we get caught once. We get caught twice. Boom. So now we don't get caught. And for this one in particular, um, this guy would walk to the left. He would stop here. He would walk back to the right, look down, walk back to the left, and then like that. So it was a really long thing. Also, I think it's possible to get by there. I tried. It is a very tight window if it is possible. But... Oh, wait, right. There we go. But yeah, that is it for that section. Hey. And then there's an Excadrill going wild in one of the rooms. Uh, but we... We now have the controller, so we, we were able to calm him down. some questions we're gonna get this is kind of like the lore dump part of the game Oh, I didn't do the bottom. I was supposed to do this. Okay, so we have to talk to all the Pokemon. So there's those two, and I think it's just Hariyama in here. Yeah.
Excadrill go burr. We need to get downstairs, so we're going to have the Excadrill drill through the floor. Uh, and now comes one of the longest mm -hmm. floors. Um, this one, especially when I was learning and like writing down the notes and stuff, this this floor just kept going and kept going. Um, which, by the way, if anyone is interested in running this game, um, either full game or if we end up doing like single mission runs, because I think single mission runs would be good. They're they're all a good length, like they're between 20 and 35 minutes, basically, for each one. Um, so I think that would be a good, good thing to do. There's only like five people on the leaderboards, so there's not a lot of interest. But um, if you are interested... Um, I can certainly clean up my notes and get, make them available. Uh, obviously I've done runs of this game before, but I basically am going off of my notes, um, mm -hmm. rather than practice because I, <laughs> I didn't have a ton of time to practice before the marathon and this run it's a bit behind my PB but it's it's going pretty well so I think the notes are in a good state but I would I would definitely want to clean them up I, don't know, I think it's a fun little game and I encourage everyone to try I encourage people to play this casually as well um, I think it was um, that's not what I wanted. I wanted the gears. I think the the story is good. I think the the puzzles are pretty good. Like I said, there's all the local concerns that I I haven't even uh, touched on at all in the run, um, which I haven't done most of those yet myself. We gotta go back, and get the toolbox. Hey. Wait. Oh, I gotta talk to the right desk again. Bye. Never mind. All right, maybe my notes could use a little work. <laughs> to be fair, it's also one in the morning. I've been up since six, but. I didn't want to blow torch the hey. I did just come off a run, yeah. If, if people missed the Scarlet Violet Treasures of Ruin race, I highly recommend you watch it. Completely not biased. No, I guess you have to go. God. Mm -hmm. 
We're getting there. Like I suggested earlier, the ending of this is actually fairly abrupt. Um, we still have a ways to go, but it is uh, it is pretty funny because it's just there's so many cutscenes and quick time events and stuff that all just get skipped. Um, so it it feels very anticlimactic, but. We got to get through the lore dump part of the game first. No. Wait, what? Oh, I need to deduce. Bum bum. Now oh, we're talking to Pikachu. All right, so we're heading into the final area. Um, we're going to have another one of those like end of investigation. So there's going to be like a whole stretch of uh, movement here to get to the ending. Basically, it's it's a lot of each Pokemon is going to like do its duty. Like this is going to be Darmanitan breaking open boxes. Um, and then, like, Luxray stays behind to, like, fend off the people and stuff. Um, so you end up not having your full team when you go to the... The final area. Yeah, Luxray just stayed behind. Um, but yeah, so there's going to be those in end of investigation questions that uh, happen at the end of every investigation. And then uh, there's going to be a couple of puzzles, basically. Um, a couple more questions, and then there's going to be a final cutscene that we have to watch because it can't be skipped. Um, but we're going to watch on fast forward, which is really awkward because it is quiet and muted. Um, and then time will be at the end of that, so... I'm going to guess about three or four minutes. Um, this section is really cool. Like, like I said, if you haven't played the game, even though like you're getting spoiled a little bit on the story, play this part and everything. Uh, it is really cool. There's like this whole battle and stuff. It's just, it all gets skipped. I cannot imagine. <laughs> it's just so sad because it just all gets skipped. All right. 
One seven zero six zero eight. Bottom left, top right. Okay. more questions and that is effectively it um so yeah i don't i don't really have a whole lot to say um like i said this was detective pikachu returns um Time will be after there's like one final cutscene uh, that we can't skip. And when it fades to black after that. And the fastest way is to watch this fast forward, which is muted. Yeah. <laughs> so, um,. But yeah, this this was a lot of fun. I uh, I definitely enjoy this game. Uh, that was time, by the way. I just completely didn't realize it was fading out. I apologize to tech. I'm so sorry. Uh, looks like they got it, though. Anyways, um, that was Detective Pikachu Returns. Fun little game. Um, like I said, uh, one of the best things about it, it's got the story jump mode where you can literally just go in and do any of the missions. So doing like individual levels would be totally possible. Um, it's really easy to practice. Uh, it's, it's short and, um, and I enjoy it. So, um, thanks for, thanks for watching. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Um, make sure you all stick around for the rest of the marathon. Um, I, I plugged it a couple times during the run, but any run that you miss will be up on YouTube in the next couple weeks. Um, but the, the marathon's going all weekend. It's going all the way through Monday. I think it is. Um, there's a lot of fun stuff. I will be back myself on Sunday, uh, doing some Pokemon. Let's go. If you want to stick around for that, or if you want to show up for that. Um, however, uh, there are runs between now and let's go. And the next one is Omega 44 doing Pokemon White 2 Baton Pass Challenge, mo challenge Mode. Uh, it'll be a cool five and a half hour estimate, it looks like. Um, so definitely stick around for that. That is one I'm unfortunately going to have to watch after the fact because I am running on 19 hours awake. So I need to go to bed. But uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, 